Hi and welcome to Shaky's Sports Journeys. I've been bringing uh, content from loads of different sports and in recent times in particular, lots of boxing content has been coming through. Uh, I've got a great guest for you today. Um, I, I, I watched a lot of this guy's fights. Um, he's, uh, he's famously known, um, I'll tell you his nickname in a second, but this man is a, a former WBA international super bantamweight champion and former European and Commonwealth Super Bantamweight Champion. A welcome to the podcast, the boxing bin man himself, Brendo Monroe. How are you doing, sir? I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, mate. Very well. All the better for all the better for chatting to you, my friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out as well to, to Javier Kalik, who put us in touch with each other. Um, you yeah, know, man. I really appreciate that. And as soon as he, he he sent me Rendo's name, I was I was straight on it. I was like, that's a guy I want to be talking to. So Rendo, let's 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 go back. Let's 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 go take a trip down memory lane. You're a Leicester boy. Tell yeah, me yeah. About born, born, born and bred. Born and bred. Born and bred, Leicester boy. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your childhood, your family background, what it was like growing up there. Um, yeah, it was sound like every other kid, really. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, my dad, obviously coming from the Caribbean. My dad's obviously Jamaican. My mum's obviously from 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 the UK. So yeah, grow grow up with a mixed parentage, mixed heritage. You know what I mean? You can see that Learning. in the background as well, Rendell. That's it. You that's look it. Over the top of his head. He that's used to come it. in with a half Jamaican, half English flag. I love that's that. It. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, childhood was like like many normal childhoods. You know what I mean? Obviously, it weren't glossy. It wasn't brilliant, but it weren't bad. You know what I mean? Obviously. Everyone's everyone's got their own says of how there is and how they believe. But me, I, I was cool. Do you know what I mean? One of them. What were you? What kind of things were you into? Were you? Did you um, play many sports? Not really. I was into running really at school. Do you know what I mean? I was I was I was into running more. I started. I didn't start playing football till I was about um, fifteen. Sorry about that. No, you're all right. T -t 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 till I was about fifteen, and obviously by then I'd already been. I, I was already start boxing. Oh, that that that's my missus now. I'll keep ringing, she'll keep ringing, you know. <laughs> Apologies. Why do so, we pause? Why do we yeah. pause? pause? So we just had a little pit stop there. Um, yeah. Rendell's good lady uh, was calling. It's always important. <laughs> it's always important. All the listeners out there, when your missus calls, attend to the phone call. Yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So definitely. you were uh, you were talking there. You know, you were in it running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, like you say, I was one of them energetic kids. You know what I mean? I just, I just always out and about. Do you know what I mean? Went to a youth club, I had a, uh, um, a little play scheme round the corner from my house. I used to go there a lot. So yeah, I was just always, you know what I mean, active all the time. Education side of things, schools. I hated school. You know what I mean? I didn't think it was me. I used to struggle sitting down for five, ten minutes. I always wanted to be on the go all the time. So yeah, like I said, childhood was a growing up thing for me. Obviously, I realised then that. I was just this kid who always wanted to be active, you know what I mean? And I reckon at 40 odd years old now, I'm still the same. <laughs> Did you, um, what, what age were you when you left school? Um, I was 16, obviously. I, um, I left school at the right age, obviously. I went to school. I'd say I never had the best schooling record, obviously. I think I got it, uh, suspended every year, twice a year. And I think I, I kind of got to know the drift that when the counsellors were getting called in, that means they wanted you out of school. So it was like trying to get on top of the behaviour for a bit, you know what I mean? And then next year round, go again, you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, I didn't leave school with the best education. Like I said, I wasn't really into into sitting down in class and things like that, you know what I mean? I was the, I would say when I left school, bit of the clown, you know what I mean? I left with ease for excellence, you know what I mean? One of them, I was that type of kid, you know what I mean? So, but then when you, when you start time to get a job and that and you're telling them what you got and you're laughing about it and they're looking at you like, mate, ease ain't getting you near, you know what I mean? So... Here's one of them. You left school. Obviously, you didn't have great career path up, you know, clear cut path at that point. Oh uh, no. Not, not many qualifications. Um, what did you what 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 route did you go? Basically, I just wanted to be independent for myself. So basically I just got on, I was doing work here, work there, you know what I mean? I was on the agencies, you know, what I mean, order picking, packing, selling windows, did a bit of mechanics for a bit. Did a bit of engineering, you know what I mean? I started making shoes. I was knocking on door-to-door -door salesmen, selling double glazing windows and things like that. Then I went into making windows, you know what I mean? So I did, I did a bit of everything, really, do you know what I mean? I just wanted to be that, 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 that lad that didn't depend on nobody. I could do it myself. So, yeah, you know what I mean? So your, your, your famous nickname, and, your, and, it's, and it's stuck with you all through your That's box. it, that's it. 
even as far as your corner men. Yeah. Where they, where they, where they, where they, but when did you start? When did you start going? Um, I, I started on the bins. It must have been about a, a year and a, a year and a bit after I'd been pro. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously at the time I was like, I need a job where I could finish in time to get to the to get to the gym. I want to get to the gym. Obviously, me traveling to the gym was fifty miles away. So I needed I needed a job where I could get. And then someone said to me, oh, why don't you go on the bins? I'm like, nah, 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 that can't work for me about no bin, man. Forget that. And then someone says, oh, really? It's, it's job and knock. So I'm like, what do you mean job and knock? Yeah, you just get this many bins done in the day and then you, then you go home. So I was like, okay, then that's the perfect job for me. How do, I, how do I get that? And then obviously my brother knew someone who was on the agency and he says, oh, go and speak to this guy. He might be able to get you on the bins. And he, he, he got me on the bins. But obviously I went there as an the agency first. But I think the light tower worked, and then in the end, I, I got a full time job. So it's interesting. It's interesting that you took that role to be able to service your your boxing career. So by yeah. then, that means prior to taking that job, you'd already had an amateur career, 30, yep. 10, 30 10 record, and you'd already had your first pro fight, which was two thousand and three. Um, yep. Stopped Joe Vinny in the third round. Tell yeah, me yeah. About that. Tell me about that night. Oh gosh, that was that 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 was one of the best and most memorable fights I could say for me. I think I always remember all through my, my my amateur career, everything was just I just wanted to fight. I wasn't bothered about winning. I wasn't bothered about losing. Don't get me wrong, you know what I mean. I wanted to win, but everything was just about ding ding round one out the door. I thought I was Tyson. Let's get in there, throwing bombs all over the place. Let's go for it. So obviously, when I've gone to the Shinfields gym now. Jay Shinfield, obviously my trainer at the time, he was like, Brenda, we've got to calm down and box, calm down. So for all of this time, I've been practicing, keeping calm, throwing a jab, boxing nicely. I was remembering this fight. First time, I'd, I think I'd sold about 80 tickets my first ever fight, you know what I mean? So more more, more tickets I've ever sold in my life. I think in my amateur career, I think I'd, I'd have about six, seven people come in my amateurs because I was just crackers. So um, I always remember I've gone out there and Jay's going to me, we've gone to the ring and we're in the corner and Jay's going, remember, Rendell, cool, calm, collective, work on the jab, work on what we've done. So I'm like, yeah, 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 no problems, Jay, no problems, I'm on it, I'm on it. Anyway, first round's gone. Gone out there, gone out there, chucked a jab, I missed him. He's chucked a jab, I've slipped it. I've chucked a next jab, I've hit him, and the crowd's gone, way, and I've just gone absolutely nuts. <laughs> I'm chasing him around the ring, I'm throwing punches everywhere. I swear if the ref got close enough, he would have got one. Do you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What I've come back to the corner, sat down. Jay's got in, looked at me and gone, what the F was that? And I just burst out laughing like, Jay, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. And, and that's, I always remember that's, that was my first fight. And then after that, you know what I mean? Back onto it. I think all, all that adrenaline's gone now. And then went out next round, went out there looking good. Third round, turned up the heat and stopped him. You then went on from there, and you um, you had you, you know you, you you notched up ten wins in your pro career, which is a which is a great start to your career. That scene you come to lovely sunny Edinburgh yeah, for yeah. a British British title fight against Andy Morris. Morris. Tell, tell me about that night. Well, um, it was one of them where we we we, we got offered the fight. Uh, Jay and Mike says, "Oh, we've been offered a um, a British title fight, uh, Feather." So I was like, "Well, at the end of the day." do you think I'm good enough? And they were like, of course you are. So I'm like, well, well, let's go for it then. What we got to lose? I either go there and learn or I go there and win. I ain't bothered, whichever happens. You know what I mean? I, I always had the belief that you, geez, no one's stopping me. So I either lose and look absolutely a million dollars or I win and I come out as champion. Considering the fact that we was already talking about fighting at Super Bantam anyway. So I was like, yeah, let's go for it. I always remember I'd went from beating uh, Mark Callan, And I think I'd, I'd never done anything past really like six, seven rounds before. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was kind of topping up to it was my first 12 round fight. Like you do all the sparring prior, 12, 15 rounds. I was, I was fitting off, you know what I mean? I was fitting off. But because I've never done it before, it was that kind of hold a bit, hold a bit, hold a bit. And then I always remember at the end of round 12, I've come back to Jay and I've gone, you know what, Jay? I've still got loads left in the tank, you know? I don't know why, but you know what I mean? But I think I was more afraid that I didn't want to blow myself out, you know, being a, a first 12 round fight. I think I did myself well. I thought, you know, at times you kind of go, 
have I won? Ain't I won? And then obviously I always remember Jay saying, remember, Rendell, when you're boxing the champion, you have to beat the champion. It's not, you don't nick it off the champion, you beat the champion. And I think from that point, it was like, okay, then, no worries. So we've got the, we, we never got the decision. But at the same time, as I said, you know what? We've just proved ourselves how good we are at that weight. I always remember, I think Mike had had, had me a fight set up. He got he, he tried to set a fight up after a, a basic back at Super Bantam. And Super Bantam didn't want to fight me. They just didn't want to fight me. So I think I'd done and uh, uh, proved myself good enough there. I think it took me 12 months to get another fight back down at Bantam. Because then, you like fought, I said, because you fought so well. So that's it. Went keen to went that's it. Too well in boxing. That what I said. Avoid you. Yeah, yeah. So and then I always remember Maloney coming along, speaking at the gym, basically saying, "Look, I can make you a champion. This is the road you should take." Obviously, like same again. I just followed what Mike and Jay said, and I said, "Look, if if this guy is saying what he's saying, then we ain't got nothing else to lose, have we? Let's let's go for it." And 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 that's when the that's when it all started ringing bells everywhere. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, we're going to talk, you know, three three fights, you know, you talk about Mark Callahan. I, I found it interesting when you, when I was looking up, looking up your career and doing my studying on it, you know, you said that was a tough fight. One yeah, of the yeah. tough fights that you had, the guy just had a hard, hard head. Oh, flipping it. I always remember that with that, it was like, Jay said to me, remember, Rindle, you've got to go and you've got to win. We, we, we're we fit enough to do it. Let's go and do it. I remember coming out first round, I'm hitting him, I'm hitting him, I'm thinking, flipping it, man, this guy is hard, this guy, hitting him, hitting him. Come back after the first round, Jay's gone, Rendell, calm down, you're going to pull yourself down. out, calm down. So I was like, okay, then, so I've gone out next round, I've come back and he's gone, I said, calm down, Rendell, don't go sleep, man, what's wrong with you? So I'm like, oh, okay, then, go back out again, and I've turned up the gas again, and but he, he was just like, you know, like, just someone just hitting and hitting, and you're thinking, mate, How's this guy taking this these shots here? You know what I mean? At times I'm hitting him so clean, I'm thinking, I can't believe it. He's, he's still just trying to fight back. Still just trying to fight back. But same again, it was another learning curve for me to know that not everyone is going to fall over. Do you know what I mean? Sounds like Jay had his hands full with you. Sounds like, um, you know, you were learning, learning as you were going through it. Sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah. Were, sounds like you were raw at that time. You wanted the knockout. Like you mm -hmm. said earlier, you said I had that Tyson mentality. That's it. But that fight probably taught you that I need to learn to just box here. And yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, th I think, I think the learn, the learn, the biggest learning fight for me was one of the early ones. Um, I think it was Kalu. I think uh, an African. I think I fought him um, in Essex. I'm sure it was Essex or somewhere like that. And I always remember I just won that fight. And I always remember I went out first round. Wow, 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 wow. Second round. Wow, wow. And Jay's going to be Rendell. Stop, man. Just listen. Just box. What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, 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 Jay, don't worry, man, don't worry, I'm all right, I'm all right. Go back out there. But the thing was, is I was hitting him with one, and he was hitting me about, about six back. And he goes, he's going, Rendell, stop, stop, listen to me, listen to me. And as the round's gone, he's going, Rendell, if you don't listen, you're going to lose, I'm telling you. And then it was kind of that, okay, then, okay, then, okay, then. So I won, and I just won the fight, do you know what I mean? Uh, but I think that was, the, that was the part there where it was like, Rendell, you got to start listening to what the trainer's saying now, Yes. The trainer ain't in there doing the fighting with you, but listen to him because he knows. And that was, like I say, then going on to the Callahan fight, it was like, yes, I've gone out, out there. And then he's told me, calm down. And then I think I've gone in the next round. I've calmed down too much. Do you know what I mean? So it was like I was learning on the road type of thing. Training, I want to touch on training. We've got, we've got some great fights to talk about after this. But the, the, the life of a boxer is, you know, it's one I, 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 I admire a great, great deal, the dedication that goes into it. But tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day life was like. Uh, me, like you say, I was, I was one of them who looked at, I, I wasn't the most talented boxer around, so I used to think that my energy level and my, 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 my drive was what gave me the advantage over everyone. So basically on a, on a normal day for me, I'd normally get up about five o'clock, go for a run. Then from a run, I'd go into work. We'd be emptying two and a half thousand bins a day. So that, that'd be on my shift. I'd finish work, depending on what day it was, but I averaged about uh, one, two o'clock finish. So I'd be in work for half six, out working, one, two o'clock finish, drive over to the Shinfields gym, obviously do my session over there for an hour and a half, drive home, and then depending on what day it was, because same again, I always, I always like to have a bit of a structure. So 
my structure was on certain days I'd do a spin class, on certain days I'd do running, on certain days I'd do swimming. Do you know what I mean? So I was had a bit of a structure to what I was doing. So on some days I'd come home, I'd come from the gym and I'd never even like sit down. I'd just come, drop my wet kit off, pick up some fresh kit and go to another gym because I was either going there to go do spin class or I was going there to do another running session or something like that. And then I'd go there. So I'd, I'd, sometimes I'd get back in for about eight, half eight, and then bed again, ready to get up next morning to go again. Wow. That's, uh, mm. that's, that's some day, mate. I'm tired. Yeah, that's it. That. I'm tired <laughs> listening to that. You know, um, I bet when you were on the job with the boys as well on the bench, they probably used your energy because you probably were able to, to get through. Well, you that's probably- it. That's it. That was the thing for me. It was always like, I need to get done because I want to get to training. I need to get done because I want to get training. Do you know what I mean? Then in the end, there was t- they used to say, oh, my, my round was one of the quickest rounds about. Do you know what I mean? I always remember one time we used to have, so it was like, you, you'd call it a gang. So there's three of you, you had your driver, Pete was my driver. And then there was me and Wayne and obviously me and, uh, there, there was a few, a few of us, but always me and Pete was always on the same gang. Others left, others came. And I always remember one time we had an agency turn at one time. So, we always knew when there was an agency about it, it was going to be a bit more of a slower day. So you kind of go with it, go with the flow. Anyway, so we're working. And then I was remember being in the truck and the agency lads like, oh, I thought you know, fuss. You know what I mean? This ain't, this ain't quick working. So I said to Pete, is this guy taking a mick? I says, we're trying to slow it down so we don't get left behind. But and then Pete's gone to me. Let's get on it, Wendell. We must have done two streets. And the guy's like, I've got to go home. I'm done. I've got to go home. <laughs> so for, for me, it was like, Let's get done. The quicker we get done, the quicker we go home. Do you know what I mean? It suited you. Suited you. Uh, what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was perfect for me. So you almost got a chance to fight for the British title, but that, you know, tell me about about that. That that didn't happen. And no. Then... I, well, like you say, I was meant to fight um, Isan Pickering. I was remember he made me come all the way to Newark Fairground, got me in the ring, says, "Oh, this is gonna be my first defense." Blah 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 blah. So I'm like, yeah, man, perfect for me. Fight for British title, and we we both had. Uh, um, well, it was it was it was classed as a warm up fight for him, but more of a just another fight for me, another bit of experience. So we fought, we both fought on the um, Carl Froch undercard in Nottingham. I think I fought Jonathan Whitehead, and I think he fought um, Sean Hughes, Sean Short Fuse Hughes. I think his name was. Obviously, I've st- I've stopped Whiteman, so obviously. I've done my bit of the, I've done my bit of the trick, so I'm ready. Then each champion picking loses to show news. So that put a spanner in the works because it was like, well, what goes on there? And I always remember Mike turned around and said that Sean News will not fight me for the British title. He won't fight me for the British title. So it was like, well, change the plan then. Where do we go? Where do we go? And then obviously that's when Maloney come up with the next idea of fighting Kiko Martinez. Uh, I mean that is where your career, for me, this moment, really, it really does take your career off. Kiko Martinez is a tough, tough cookie. You know, yeah. I've watched many of his fights. He's he's a he's a tough Spanish Spaniard. He yeah, yeah. Forward for twelve rounds, um, yeah. and you got, you went into it as a massive underdog. Yeah, yeah. You. So talk to me about the the lead up and the fight itself. Well, we we we, we got offered the fight, and uh, Maloney, all oh, Maloney says is look. Rendell's hard, he's got the energy, and I don't think he can last with, with, with Rendell. So Mike and Mike and Jen, that same again. My thing was is if you tell me we're fighting, we're fighting. I don't care. We're fighting. So we we we, we took the fight, and then everyone was like, Oh, I remember getting phone calls like, Oh, are you sure you're ready for this fight? Do you know what I mean? I was like, Come on, man, the guy's got two arms, two legs like me. You know what I mean? He can punch, I can punch. Everyone was going off the Bernard Dunn knockout. And let's get it right. Bernard Dunn ain't even warmed up into the fight yet. Obviously, he's got caught. I think it lasted about 60 seconds. Do you know what I mean? So everyone was like, oh, oh, oh is this, is that, is this, is that. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I was when Maloney's coming. He says, right, I've got the right sparring partner for you now, just for this. So I'm like, okay, then. So they're going, oh, it's um, Carl Johansson. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. Now I know Carl Johansson can punch. And obviously, same again. He's up at Super Feather and he's one of the hardest hitting Super Feathers around at the time. So I'm thinking, flipping it. Anyway, we've gone, we've gone leads. And I always remember all the way there, I've got butterflies all the way there because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to manage this? And then I, always, I remember Jay saying, Rendell, just stay on your toes, 
box and move, box and move. Don't let him hit you. So I'm like, okay, okay. Anyway, he's caught me, isn't he? He's hit me. And as he's hit me, I've just heard, Bing! And I'm like, oh my gosh, what was that? But at the corner of my eye, I've seen Maloney give a, a little bit of a smile. So we've carried on the sparring, obviously, you know what I mean? And then obviously, as we finish the sparring, Maloney's turned around and he's gone, you beat him, Martinez. And I'm like, oh, okay then, all right then. And then all the way home, Jay goes, when he hit you, Maloney looked and thought, Carl Johansson ain't, ain't even rocked him. This Martinez kid can't do nothing to him. And that was, I think that was when Maloney got, you know what I mean, got a bit happy. And obviously even the team were getting a bit happy now because they was thinking, flipping it, Rendell's just been hit by this. And he's still there. He's still doing what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? And I think that the vibe went through the camp as in like, that's just proved it for us. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, well, like you say. That's a test. He wanted yeah, yeah, that's if it. You could, if you could take the take a big shot of somebody that's even, it. even stronger. Even stronger, and, do you know what I mean? And, and, and you, you go into that fight then fit and ready for the ready battle. Then. That's it. Do you know what I mean? So I always remember that all they said to me is, right, Rendell, box him. Three rounds in, he's got good three rounds in him. After three rounds, he won't do nothing. He won't do nothing. Just keep tying him up, keep moving away from him. And that's what I did, do you know what I mean? And, and, and obviously, I, I outboxed him, I schooled him. Great achievement to do that. You, you win that one, you go on, have another fight, then you rematch him. Yeah. And what, what was it? Did, did he, was he always after the rematch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that basically they, they came up with the excuse about, oh, he was injured before the fight, before the first fight. And I'm like, look, I ain't bothered. Do you know what I mean? I ain't bothered. I'll beat you again. I'll beat you once. I'll beat you. My, that was my thing. I'll beat you once. I'll beat you again. Because I go forward. I don't go backwards. So I always remember that I say to Mike and Jay, the only way I can better this performance now is to stop him. The only way I can better this performance now is to stop him. And if I'm honest, the ref should have stopped the fight about the 11th round. And I always remember I'm, I'm, I've got him in the corner. I'm hitting him in the corner, hitting him in the corner. And he's holding one of my arms and hitting the other one. But the rest, I can see the ref standing at the side. And I'm thinking, ref, Come on. And I always remember, because I'm in his corner, you have two you have two cornermen. And I always remember one of the cornermen's got the towel, gone to chuck the towel. And I just about as I've gone, hey, the other cornerman's yanked the towel out of his hand. He must have knew that the round was going to finish. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So he's yanked the thing here and then it went on. So it went on for another round. But I reckon if that other, if that other cornerman didn't yank the towel off him, I think they, they were going to chuck the towel in. So that was two convincing wins. You going into yeah. that, you were an underdog. Yeah. You know, that that must have changed a lot for you in your career because I mean he's still fighting. He's still fighting now. He's had some tough. Yeah. Oh man, how good did he look the other day? He, he's a tough guy. I mean, he's fought Frampton. Yeah. Uh, fought Quig. He's fought all. You know, he's a tough, tough, tough cookie. Um, that then leads you on. Your name obviously just your, your your name res, rose in stock after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the chance to. Fight a world title eliminator fight yeah, yeah. against the, at that point number three in the world, Victor yeah. Tarazas. Yeah. Listen, fighting any Mexican is always is always a tough challenge. But a guy yeah. that's a world number three at the time, how did that fight come about? Basically, I I I got myself into the manager position really. So before that, I think I fought um Simi Mojotu, I think, defending my European title. That was my hardest fight in my whole career, Simeon Mel Jotter. Oh, my really? hardest fight in my whole... Yeah, my, my hardest fight in my whole career. But at that time, I was told that that was my eliminator to fight for a world title. Then, out of the blue, I have to fight a final eliminator, another one. So, but me being me, I'm like, look, I'm the best, I ain't bothered. We fight anybody, do you know what I mean? And, and so th that's how the Tarazas fight come about. Same again. I think in all the fights, you know that Rendell don't start off very good, but it's just his... Ongoing, 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 no stopping that kind of does everybody. And I think that's what that's what did Trazas. And I always remember a, a, one, a fan of mine obviously went to the Trazas change rooms after the fight and, and spoke to him. And, and Trazas said, I've never been in with anybody as strong as that kid. Do you know what I mean? So it was just it was just that perseverance of I believed in myself. Do you know what I mean? I believed I can do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think as well from talking to you all the way through this. Your fitness is was incredible. Oh, I, I, I was, I was, I used to, I used to run fifty mile a week. Oof. 
50 mile a week every that every single Monday. Childhood. That came from your childhood as well. That's it. You were only running from a running. Yeah, running. yeah, yeah. Like I say every, every Monday I used to do 10 mile minimum. Every Monday. Run, rendo, run, forget. That's it. <laughs> run, That's rendo, it. Run. But I mean the swimming, the spin, all of these things in 12 round fights and big title fights. They're going to stand you in good stead when you go in. Yeah, the, yeah, that's it. Rounds. That's it. Yeah, definitely. So you, when you get the call that, listen, mate, we're sending you over to Tokyo, Japan. Oh, right there and then in the changing room. Right there and then after the fight in the changing room. Right there and then. Did you know that it was, was it. Going to, Did you know it was going to be Toshiaki? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because obviously I was fighting. Because obviously there was all about me at one point fighting for the IBO World Title. It was on about me fighting for the IBF world title. Um, to fight the, for the IBF title, the, um, it was Nathan Sting. Um, um, Steve Molitor, sorry, my bad. Steve Molitor. Steve Molitor didn't want to fight me. He wanted to fight Jason Booth instead. And to fight for the IBO, there was on about, I'd have to fight Martinez for a third time. But Martinez didn't want to fight me a third time. So that's why we ended up going the WBC route. And obviously, and th- th- this fight was to fight Nishioko. This, this, the, the, the beating Terrazas was the opportunity to fight Nishioko. So we already knew then okay. that I beat, I beat Terrazas and I'm, I'm going to Japan to fight. Do you know what I mean? What, like, how did you prepare for that? That's, 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 that's a total different world now. <laughs> going to a country that probably not many fighters go to and you're going to challenge for a title, you're up against it early yeah. days. Because, you know, like you said earlier, you have to go and rip that title out of his hand. That's you it. You can't nick it. So how was the build-up to that fight? The, the build-up was good, really. Obviously, I had a lot of help from Leicester Football Club, obviously, because um, they were saying about the altitude is different over there. So Leicester Football Club um, let me use, a, like, a, a, a an altitude machine. Do you know what I mean? So at night times, I'd go onto a machine at night to help me out with my breathing and things like that, just to get me instead... Instead for it. So everything was everything was great. I went over to Portugal for a week or two, you know what I mean, training in the heat, you know what I mean, to get, get things right. So everything went everything went perfect to be fair. Do you know what I mean? I think for me, I always tell everyone I'm I'm an honest guy. I made a little bit of a slip up after the scales the first time I ever did it. And it showed in the fight. Do you know what I mean? You live and you learn. But I thought I'd prove myself good enough that I'm good enough to be up at that level. But nothing come about it. Like he says, I always remember Mike Shinfield said to me on the plane on the way home, you've just proved yourself too good for your own good. And I was like, well, what, what, what do you mean? He goes, oh, just, just, just believe me. That was it. And, and that was it. Because obviously, I couldn't get another fight after that. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't get another was, world title fight was, after that. What was, what was good about him? What, was, what, 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 what did he do well? He was, he was just quick. The, the, you know what I mean? He was just quick. And, but like I always say, you can never judge yourself when you know you're not 100% yourself. Do you know what I mean? I always remember from about round five, round six, I just didn't feel myself. Do you know what I mean? It was, it weren't right. And I, and I always remember saying to Jay in the corner, I said, something ain't right. And I don't think I can win, but I ain't going to let him stop me. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and like he says, you, 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 in your own mind, you're like, Rendell, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Do you know what I mean? I always, I always remember after, after the, um, after the fight, you, you do a drugs test after the fight. And I always remember going in the to- in, 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 back in the change room. They were going, you have to do a urine sample. So I'm waiting to do my urine sample. And, and the doctor's like, oh, you've got to do a urine sample. The ju- drugs people are there. And I'm saying, I don't know what it is. I just can't go toilet. Just give me something. So I, can, I need to, I don't know. Just give me some fluids, man. I need to, because I need to go. So it must have been about half an hour or so. I'm, and I'm getting the fluids down, drinking the fluids. Anyway, I've gone. And it looked like, when I weed in the bottle, it looked like mud. And the doctor kind of like looked at me and goes, that's severe dehydration. How are you still standing up? I said, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? But that, that was what must have been the effect, uh, the effect in the fight because it was about round five. I always remember sitting down in the corner and the Jay's gone, oh yeah, I said, good, I'm good. He says, right, let's turn up the gas now. And I think even all my friends who came, they normally go like, you can see Rendell's going to go now. And I, I remember standing up and both my calves felt like they wanted to rip. And it was just like, it's hard to say from, unless you know it as a boxer's point of view, but you know, like that split second, that split second you see, but you, you, your body ain't going. You're like, mate, what, what, what's going on? I can see it and I'm telling, my brain's telling my body go, but my body ain't going. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's how it felt for me. Do you know what I mean? It's a shame, man. I, I watched the fight. I remember the fight well. 
and it, it was it was it was a it was a frustrating night because it wasn't the best Rendell Monroe in the ring that no. night. Um, and that's you, do you have any regrets about that? Yeah, I do, but then you see, you live and you learn. But like, like you say, for me, I kind of, I look at many things in life and think, what I achieved, I should never have achieved. Where I'm going and what I'm doing now is one of the reasons because I didn't become a world champion. So like you say, who knows? The man most probably said, Rendell, you, stop there, mate. You, you, you've done enough. Enjoy what you've got and go from there because I've got other plans for you. Listen, you're spot on. What you achieved in your career, unbelievable. And, and not many people get to go over and challenge for a world title. This is the thing that I, I think can be cruel about boxing as well. People only judge people that win world titles. Otherwise, oh, he's, he, he's no good. No, I see. It's, it's easy to say that from the couch. It's easy. Oh, like everyone said, I could afford any of the world champions at the time, apart from Nishioka, or even if you brought Nishioka to England, I'd have been a world champion. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'd have been a world champion. But it is what it is, and it, and it goes the way it goes. Yeah, yeah. This was then starting to lead you towards the back end of your career. You you, you parted ways at that point with Frank Maloney, and yeah, you signed yeah, yeah. with uh, signed with Hatton Promotions. And yeah. I remember as well. I mean, one of the big fights that you, you had towards the back end of your career was at the MEN Arena where you fought Scott yeah. Quigg. Yeah, yeah. Frustrating night, sad way, sad way it ended yeah. with, a, with a headbutt. What's your, what was your what was your relations like with, with Ricky and going into that fight? It, it was good, you know. Obviously. Mike and Jay said to me, look, we, 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 Maloney ain't going to get the fights you need now, so we need to move. We need to go somewhere else. We need to do something. So he spoke to, obviously, Mike. Obviously, Mike's in from my manager. Spoke to a few people, and he says, right, I've got us a little bit of a meeting with Ricky Atten. So I thought, okay, then, cool. No worries. So going with Ricky Atten was like, I kind of remembered he had all the connections with Golden Boy Promotions and Top Rank and things like that. So I thought, well, at least, if anything you might be able to get us some fights, you know, in America or something like, you know, to give me some more opportunities of where yeah. to go and what to do. So obviously he turned around and he says, right, um, you sign with me. First fight I'll get you is for the WBA international title. So it was like, well, flipping it, man, straight back in on, on the, on the stage again. So obviously we had that fight, won that. So obviously I'm now WBA inter in international champion. So we kind of like on this point now where, where do we go? I always remember I get a, uh, gets a, a phone call off Ricky. He says, right, I've just got a fax off top rank. You, Mike and Jay need to come here so I can show you that. So I'm like, oh, flipping it, man. Finally, we get somewhere. We're going somewhere. Anyway, we've gone to his house. He showed me the, 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 the fax. He says, have you got anyone to fight Yoga Arce in Mexico for the WBC title apart from Rendell Monroe? So it's like, oh, my gosh. So there we go. So one of the legends of the sport, he, I can't even get to fight him. But and then it just, everything from there, like, forwarded in, look, you're going to have to fight Quig. You're going to have to fight Quig. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm one of the best in the world. Quig's best in Britain, man. That, that, that don't work for me. How's that work? I'm meant to be going up the ladder, not coming down the ladder. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But then it was like, there was nothing else there. It was like, Rendell, you've got to fight Quig. You've got to fight Quig. So I've all my career, like I said, in all, in all my fights, I just went there. I trained right. I did everything. I, I just went out there to enjoy it. What happened, happened. Where this fight, I think I could see where it was going. Like I say, I was I was around when it was coming to the end of Jowie Caddy's um, career, the Booth's career, and you kind of get to see where you are on the gravy train now. You know what I mean? The gravy train's coming to the end of the runoff, and you're ready to plop off the end. And then somebody new's getting on the other side of the train, ready to start riding. So I looked at it as in Quig's the new ride, I'm the old ride. So I either got to go out there and I got to beat Quig good, otherwise. It's coming to an end. Obviously, in the fight, people say it's an egg clash. I say it's an egg butt. He did my eye. Simple as, obviously, I was so up for this fight. I was so ready for this fight to get there because I knew this was this was it for me. And I always remember after the fight, obviously, gone back to the hotel. And I'm, I'm a bit down, do you know what I mean? And, and Mike and Jay are like, Rendell, don't worry, man. Don't worry. You'll get, you'll get the opportunities again. But I think because I'd put so much into it that this is the fight I need to do, that I kind of told myself now, that's it, man, finished. It's finished now. Do you know what I mean? Career's finished. So I was a bit on the downward slope after that. Yeah, it's, and it's a big moment for, for this. I always find, especially for boxers, and I think it must be because 
you know, the ring walks, the training. Yeah, I see. You know, the fight itself. But is, even that, do you know what I mean? Like, say, I, I always remember even that, I was a bit on the slide, I was a bit on the way down, and then and then we get some phone call again, and it, it was Mike saying, Rendell, we've got a rematch with Quig. So I'm like, oh, nice, sound, sound. But this is about three months before the fight is even going to happen. Do you know what I mean? My, my yeah. eyes still ain't healed up yet, but, but already, me being me, obviously, I don't know. That was one of my faults within boxing. I don't know whether to go when to go half-hearted or anything. Me is all or nothing. Like I say, when I used to get ready for a training camp, there weren't no right start off two miles, three miles, four miles. Me, I'd go, right, you, 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 got, you got to fight in the next eight weeks. Right, we've got to start stepping on the training camp. I'd go for a 10-mile run that night. You know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't like, oh, let's start off with a two and then go to a four and then, you know what I mean? So as soon as that point there, it was like, right, let's go, let's go. So then I'm, I'm out running. I'm out doing what I'm doing. I'm doing, and Jay, I always remember Jay used to say to Wendell, kick back a bit, man. You're going a bit too much, man. You're going too far. I always remember it must have been eight weeks out. I'm sparring 12 round spars with Jay McDonald. Jay McDonald's getting ready to fight for a world title fight. I'm doing 12 rounds with Jay McDonald. He's fighting for a world title fight in about two, three weeks. I've got eight weeks before I fight. And it was then, it was like, I was going, I was going. And then when it was time, I was, I was just like, I couldn't make the weight. I'm like, this never happens. What is going on? You know what I mean? I was a pound over the weight. I had to get on the scales naked. And it was like, at that point there, I said, Jay, I'm, I'm, I'm done, man. What's going on? I'm, I'm done. And I think Jay knew deep down then that I'd overtrained. I'd gone too far. And, and, and it was in the fight. I felt, I felt a, a hollow of myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That was my big fight at the MEN. You know what I mean? I felt, I felt a big hollow of myself. And after that fight, I retired. I said, that's it, man. I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't, I can't do it no more. I'm, I've, I've had enough. Do you know what I mean? So they did some big re re retirement thing. Obviously, they got me down at the King Power. Jay's like, yes, Wendell, enjoy yourself. Blah, blah, blah. But then I started coming back to the gym. I started, Jay used to be like, what are you doing up at the gym? I says, oh, I, I don't think I'm ready, you know, Jay. I don't think I'm finished, man. So, but me and Jay always had this agreement that Every fight will fight till he's got nothing left. And my thing was with Jay was I used to say to Jay, Jay, you need to tell me when it's over. When you tell me it's over, it's over. If I tell myself, I'm fooling myself. So because Jay never told me it was over, I turned around and said it was over. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not done yet, Jay. I'm not done. I'm not done. So he's like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to come back, but I don't want to come back as Super Bantam. I'm too big for that now. Do you know what I mean? I've been doing, I've been doing Super Bantam since I was 14 years old. I'm 30 odd years old now. You know what I mean? I need to go up a bit. So he says, what about going up to Feather? I says, no, 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 no. I want to go up to Super Feather. 9-4. I'm comfortable. So we got a bigger, a few bigger sparring partners in. I started to spar a lot with Dale Miles and people like that who were fighting at lightweight, you know, um, uh, uh, light welter and, and people like that. And everyone was like, Rendell, you're back, man. It's the old Rendell. You're back to yourself. So I just remember um, the, the comeback fight was Andy Townsend the knockout kid at the time. Do you know what I mean? He was beating everyone. He was doing this. He was doing that. And I'm like, yeah, man. Same again. Rendell don't care. I'll fight him in his backyard. I ain't bothered. We went there. Man, I beat him up. I think I lost one round. One round. And then it was like, yes. Everyone was like, Rendell's back. Rendell's back. And then I always remember, so I don't even know it was. I remember some guy coming in the changing room and goes, you know what your problem is going to be, Rendell? You're going to struggle to get fights. I'm like, why, why is that then? He says, oh, well, this is managed for the British. This is managed for the English. This is it. And then I'm like, oh my gosh. And I thought, okay, don't, don't worry about it. But I'm back. I'm ready. You know what I mean? I'm ready for this. Then it was like, Mike and Jay, I'm like, yep, we've, we've just performed against the guy who they reckon is going to be the next biggest thing. Do you know what I mean? So we're like, yeah, we're up there. We're up there. And then I always remember a bit, a few, a few months later, we get some phone call. Do you want to fight Selby for the British and European title? But I'm like, well, that's feather. I don't want, I'm going back down. I'm, I'm, I'm a super feather now. And they're like, well, you're going to be talking two years before you can even fight for a British title at uh, Super Feather, Rendell. So, do you know what I mean? So, obviously, same again. I said to the boys, what, what do we do? And they're like, Rendell, timing on your side, man. We've got to go for it or not. So, I was like, well, let's check the fight then. Obviously, he was fighting in Wales. Same again. Doing the featherweight felt like I'm trying to make Super Bantam again. Do you know what I mean? You know, like my body's telling me, look, you're trying to do too much, man. You're trying to do too much. For me, I always say I know what it's like. To be to make to make weight bad, obviously, because I did it against Quig in the second fight. 
when Selby came to the scales in that fight, I've never seen so on, someone look so drained, nothing about him on them scales. And I looked at him, and even when we did the face-off, he was swaying. And I said to Jay, I said, Jay, I beat him, you know. If we can get over six rounds, I guarantee I beat him because he ain't going to put up with this work rate. So we already knew what was going on. We already knew the plan. Anyway, we already knew Selby was going to come out because he's got to prove to everyone that, yeah, Rendell's just a super bantamweight and I'm a, I'm a big, hardest in featherweight. So we knew what he was going to do. And he come out blasting away. He come out blasting and we're kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, bro. I want him to do that. I, I know what he's doing. Anyway, I think it was about, I can't remember what round it was, fifth or sixth round. I mean, I've gone into the corner. He's, he's throwing shots. He's throwing shots. But I'm stopping all the shots from my gloves. He started swinging his hand and I've hit him with a jab. And I've come away and I've gone, no, 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 no. He's going to blow himself out because he thinks he's got me. He started swinging, him, swinging his hand again. I've hit him again. Then the referee's come in and gone, stop, stop, stop. I'm like, what, what are you doing? He said, I'm stopping the fight. I says, what do you mean? He said, I'm stopping the fight because you're not throwing enough punches. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mate, are you having an effing giraffe? Are you being serious? You are stopping the fight because you're telling me I'm not throwing enough punches. And that was the point then where in my own heart, I knew that boxing for me is finished because I'm not here as Rendell Monroe no more as the fighter. I'm here as Rendell Monroe on somebody else's record. Mm -hmm. And that was the point then where it was just like, you know what? What's the point? You kind of, you're trying to jig yourself up. Like I tell everyone, it don't matter how fit you are, it don't matter how hard you are, 75% of that fight is in the mind. And if that mind ain't there, even 5% of that mind it's a hard game. I get offered the Warrington fight after. And I'm saying to Mike and Jay, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me try and get back into it. Let me try. And, you know what I mean? Let me try. And you know when, even going for a run in the morning, I'm forcing myself to get up out of the bed. I'm forcing myself to put them extra miles in where I used to do them things on my own. Do you know what I mean? Little things like when I look back and see that my missus used to ring me up while I'm in the hotel. I used to say, what are you ringing me for? Don't ring me up. I'm trying to get in the zone. Don't ring me up. I'm ringing her now. Like, how is everyone? Is everyone at home all right? How are the kids? And it's kind of like them at the times when you think, I think it's time, you know what I mean? Because everything's changing. Do you know what I mean? In the Warrington fight, I was remember going back to the corner and Jay, like, put the towel over me. He whispered it. He says, Rendell, I think it's time. And I broke down and cried because I knew that that was the agreement. It is, it is time to call it a day. It's time to call it a day. Do you know what I mean? Comes to, comes to, comes to everybody and all, all sports people. But yeah, like I said, for a boxer, it's, it, it, it seems like it's a really tough pill to swallow because you're used to fighting. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, you know, but all good, you know, what a ride. What a job. Yeah, but oh man, loved it, loved fought. it. And like you say, I tell everyone now, I still, I still go to gym sparring all the time. Do you know what I mean? I love it. You know what I mean? It's one of them where everyone says, you know, I'll go to somewhere and I'm sparring. And everyone's like, how old are you now, Rendell? I said, because I came up to Scotland one time sparring. And and few people watching me there, and they're like, "Oh, you're nice." I'm forty. They're like, "Flipping neck, man! Look at the shape he's in, and look what he's doing at forty years old." Maybe why don't you, like... do you have another go? Why don't you have another go? And I kind of go, "What is there for me to come back for?" Because I was never what, in it for the money. I tell you what, there's a. Well, I was going to say you're not going to do it for the money, but they're bringing out all these exhibitions now. Maybe yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you could beat beat up one of these YouTubers. I wouldn't mind just seeing you beat. Oh up. man, I've, I've I've tried it. I've tried it. I tried it. I think when 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 McGregor was on about fighting Mayweather the first time, I I put I, I messaged him says if you want someone to not yet before so you get to know what it's about, let me know. You know what I mean? But no reply. <laughs> Never replied. Um, <laughs> you've done some amazing things since. This is what I want to kind of I, I want to finish on. Um, tell me about what you've done since your boxing career finished, and obviously now. You're running a school as well, which yeah, you're yeah, yeah. more about. So tell me about this side of things. Yeah, well, obviously now, like you say, I've, I've got my own little boxing gym. Obviously, I went out and got my, my professional trainer's license. You know, I mean, that was another thing. Obviously, I worked with a few pros and a few up and coming, you know, I mean, who are ready to turn pro as well. And um, obviously, even with, with, with my school stuff, I run a, I run an alternative provision called Triple Skill Sports. So basically what it was is um, while I was fighting, I used to go into schools and do talks about my background and how I didn't really get on too good at school and things like that. But in the end, you, 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 need, to, you need to think about school. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, even though when I retired, I came back from school, I went back to college and, and went, it's, sorry, this is my little one. She's just Hello. come back with her mum. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I went back to college. It cost me, you know what I mean? 
three three grand plus to go back college and get and and do my 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 level three personal training courses and nutrition courses, and it's kind of basically going on to the kids and telling them now that we all need a little something in life, and and all the kids I work with now are basically they're either excluded from school or they're on the verge of being excluded from school, so they come out of school once or twice a week. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a case of trying to put them back. And, and put them on, on, a, on a straight and narrow. Obviously, they look at someone as Rendell was a big name in Leicester. Obviously, I came from nothing to something. It's trying to put it back there for them to understand the, where it goes from and how it is. Do you know what I mean? So how many, where, where is the school and how many how many kids do you have involved in the school at the moment? Um, I think on the register, I think we've got about 30 children on the register. So how it works is some kids will come in once a week. Some kids will come in two, three times a week. They come on different days. Do you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's one of them where it's trying to help them and make them understand that, yes, with this, you'll still get a bit of education so you can still go to college because there comes a time in life where you kind of go, right, I need to move forward with what I'm doing now. I need to put it right. Like you said, at a young age, you don't really think about it. Obviously, I do that in Leicester, obviously, in, on, on the Fernby Lodge estate. Do you know what I mean? I hire a community centre. I also hire a boys club as well, so I use the two buildings to do it. Do you know what I mean? And then Obviously, I want to. I, I'm on the verge of trying to make it bigger and bigger. I want it to be one of the biggest and best alternative provisions in Leicester, Leicester year, and and basically just to to help the youths who think that if they don't go to school, that's it. Is is nowhere to go now? It's you know what I mean. So because like I said, I was one of them kids who I couldn't interact with sitting down in classrooms. I was good at PE. I was good at design technology. Anything where I was hands on, I was good. When it comes to sitting behind a desk and looking at the board and things like that. I struggled, do you know what I mean? It's great to hear, mate, that you're, um, you know, you've you've evolved as a person from your, you know, you, you've been very honest about saying that, you know, you didn't like school. Listen, I, I, I'm with you on that one. I, I didn't, I, I struggled to concentrate in school, but what you've been able to learn through life, you can now give that back. And the youth That's will, I think, react to people like you better because, you haven't. You didn't go. To, you didn't go straight out of school. Go into university. Go to college. No, no. You had to learn that you you, you did the hard work. I I, I, always, I always remember. I, I laugh about it, but when they come round in some schools, you have sixth form. So in year eleven, they're handing out sixth form letters. Anyone interested in sixth form? I didn't even get one. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't even get one. Everyone in the class got one apart from me because they knew I weren't coming back. They knew. Rendell, Rendell, <laughs> waste Rendell, of paper, Rendell. 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 <laughs> But look, boxing at the same time, man, it's it, it's changed your life. Oh, boxing. yeah, yeah, tremendously. Give, give me discipline. Thank you so much. Give me understanding about life. Taught me things, you know what I mean? Like you say, people don't realise it's like the routine of getting up, going for a run, the routine of eating the correct things, the routine of training. You know what I mean? You don't realise. I, I, I used to say, to, especially like to my friends and that, they used to say to me, oh, do you know the date? I ain't got a clue about what date it is. All I used to take notice is when Jay says, we've got eight weeks till we fight. We've got five weeks till then six weeks till then. That, that's what I was interested in. I wasn't interested in what the date was and, do you know what I mean, all them things. Christmas Day. I used to go running on Christmas Day. Do you know what I mean? It didn't bother me. Everything was about the boxing. Unbelievable dedication. I think it's great what you're doing now, Rendell. Uh, you know, I, I wish you all the very best. Um, hopefully I can get down to Leicester one day and, and pop, in, pop in. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, definitely. And see, and see the school and whatnot. But I really appreciate you coming on. If you stay on for five minutes, I'll give a yep. chat. Thank you very much, my yep. friend. No problem, man.